Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Jess Bufferson and today we are going to talk a little bit more about a gray hair or what you can do about it or what some people can do about it because uh, I have made a, a lot of videos so far about uh, gray hair and it seems that uh, what I have been telling people is working for some but it's not necessarily working for everybody so there are uh, various things you can do some people they just need to do a little bit like uh, using a uh, knack which I've spoken uh, a lot about and that is uh, in acetylcysteine that helps uh, some people and that is uh, basically enough for them I think it kind of like depends on who who you are because our genetics is a little bit different though we are all humans but uh, there are variations within uh, the population so um, some people also depending on how old they are uh, just need uh, in acetylcysteine but others they need uh, a little bit more uh, in order to help with their gray hair if uh, gray hair is something you would like to do something about and uh, here we are not uh, just talking about if gray hair looks nice or not because that depends on who you are some people like it other people don't like it or whatever that's not uh, the scope of this video here to say well, what is nice and what is not nice what we are looking at here is actually that when your hair grows uh, gray then it is because uh, there is uh, an oxidation going on and that uh, is not uh, particularly good so if you can sort of um keep it at bay the uh, oxidation of uh, the hair uh, as long as possible then it simply means that uh, your body should be working better in general but I don't think that you can put off uh, having gray hairs forever but I do think that you can uh, actually um, prolong the period where you are not having a gray hair or you can reduce uh, the amount of gray hair you are getting in the sense that you can uh, keep your color for longer but I don't think you can keep your color forever so today we are going to talk a little bit uh, about a uh, catalase and uh, catalase that is uh, the enzyme that is breaking down uh, hydrogen peroxide and it can do that uh, on its own so that is a uh, really great so we would like to boost that so we have more of it uh, in our body and uh, I have already spoken uh, about what you can do in order to help uh, catalase because there is a little issue with catalase and hydrogen peroxide because a uh, catalase is breaking down hydrogen peroxide but actually is it so that hydrogen peroxide can also break down a uh, catalase itself so uh, it is uh, not um, working um, in an optimal way because uh, what is supposed to help can actually also be broken down so you need to do uh, various uh, things in order to uh, help uh, not uh, having a uh, gray hairs so uh, one thing you can do with the uh, catalase in order to help with um, hydrogen peroxide so it's not broken down by hydrogen peroxide is that you can take something like a uh, methionine and I've spoken about that uh, in another video and you can see that uh, up here so today we are going to talk about uh, an amino acid that is called a uh, histidine but there is a little bit of an issue with histidine and uh, it turns out that uh, when uh, you are looking at various uh, studies then uh, it depending on how much histidine you are taking then actually histidine can go in and remove uh, something uh, in your body that is something that should be there and that is a uh, copper I have spoken about a uh, copper before or when people are asking if they should take copper and so on and I always say uh, you should only take copper uh, as much as uh, what is uh, recommended by official guidelines because copper that is something you can have too much of uh, in your body and that can uh, cause havoc so when I see people are talking about using a copper jug and just having water left in a copper jug overnight and then drink the water from there I think you should be really careful because you have no idea how much copper you are actually getting into your body that way and that is uh, not good in general is it not good uh, not to know how much you are getting into your body of uh, various uh, things so uh, when it comes to something uh, like copper then you should be uh, a little bit uh, careful so I will make a, a little link in the um, description box to uh, NHS here in the UK so uh, that is uh, the uh, national health um, system here in the UK and um, they say that uh, you should not take more than 10 milligrams if you are taking it uh, from a supplement so I would say go below there and if you look at the uh, supplements that are available on high street there can be some supplements that are recommending rather a lot or there is a lot of uh, copper in it and you should be really careful with that so always uh, read uh, the label and don't just assume that just because they have made a pill it's fine to eat 
always uh, check the label and see how much uh, is in there. So uh, something like this here from Holland and Barrett here in the the UK. Uh, they have, uh, as you can see, it is a uh, two milligrams uh, in a pill. So um, one thing uh, you could do is you could take maybe one or two, but uh, I wouldn't take uh, more than that. And I will keep uh, below uh, the recommended uh, guidelines uh, as uh, the NHS are saying here in the UK, which is a maximum of uh, 10 milligrams per day if you're taking it as a supplement, because you also get something from uh, your food and something like uh, awful that oh, if say liver or organ meat that has a, a lot of uh, copper in it so maybe if you would like to have it in a natural way you can eat uh, a lot of um, liver that is a uh, good in many ways but uh, some people they don't really like it so we were talking about a uh, histidine and uh, if you are looking at um, some of the uh, various studies you can find online I saw uh, two studies uh, from um, Taiwan and they were using 0 0.5 grams or 1 gram uh, per liter and uh, that would be around uh, 500 milligrams or 1 gram uh, per liter uh, when they were uh, feeding uh, some uh, mice. So uh, what that means is that usually when uh, you are feeding a, a mouse then uh, it will be given some sort of a dry food and uh, that will mean that it will drink rather a lot of water. So um, one uh, gram uh, per liter that if you were drinking maybe three and a half liter uh, a day which is usually what people are drinking during a day if you are looking at all the sort of uh, liquid that you are getting not just uh, plain water but uh, all sort of um, moisture you are getting into your body uh, during the day then that would be equal to around uh, 3.5 uh, gram of uh, histidine uh, per day if you were putting it into whatever you were drinking or whatever moisture you would get into your body so uh, it gives you a little bit uh, of an idea how much uh, that is if you are a human so compared to uh, when they were looking at uh, these uh, mice here that are obviously drinking a little bit less but um, per liter uh, it will be uh, the same so what uh, that means is that uh, you have a little bit of an idea of how much you should take but uh, how uh, much is that really well I am uh, using a, a product from uh, BulkSupplements.com uh, and I have nothing uh, to do with them. I'm not affiliated with them or anything like that. And uh, this, that is a uh, L-histidine base and uh, this is a uh, 500 uh, grams. And uh, when I use a spoon uh, like this, which uh, did not come from that bag, it came from some other bag, but uh, something like that. That is uh, the one I normally are uh, showing you. And uh, in there, there is uh, about a uh, 2.6 gram. And that is what I have been taking uh, every day for a uh, uh, long period or as long as it took to kind of like almost empty uh, this bag here of 500 uh, grams and uh, what I realized is that uh, you need to take a, a little bit uh, of copper together uh, with that because um, what happens is that histidine as I said will take away uh, copper from uh, your body so uh, you should take a, a little bit of a uh, copper uh, in relation to that and what uh, does it mean that uh, copper is uh, being removed uh, from your body well it turns out that uh, if you are looking at some other experiments where they are looking at a uh, histidine, then uh, what happened was that they were feeding, I think it was some rats at that um, analysis or that study, and they, they were giving them 8% um, in their uh, food. So that's rather a lot if you are thinking that 8% uh, of your food would be consisting of a uh, histidine. That is rather a lot. I'm sure it will taste rather awful. So uh, we are talking about a histidine and what that can actually do to your body and it can actually do something that is good but it can also if you are taking too much do something that is not so good. So it turns out that if you are taking as they did in this experiment here on, on rats then uh, it is a 8% that is rather a lot but it turns out that it removes so much copper from your body then you will have a, a problem with the cholesterol because cholesterol will actually go up uh, in your body so uh, if you're taking uh, too much histidine then it is a good idea to have your uh, cholesterol level uh, checked uh, now and then uh, in order to see uh, what is uh, going on but uh, eight percent that is uh, obviously uh, a lot but um, you never know they were just checking eight uh, percent it might be that four percent does the same thing it might be two percent does the same thing it might be that uh, what we are talking about here uh, about a 2.6 gram that also has a, a negative impact uh, on uh, the cholesterol level so it might be a good idea to have your cholesterol uh, level uh, checked if you are taking uh, a lot of uh, histidine or 
you can just go in and take a, a little bit of uh, copper uh, next to it or together with it and that should um, reduce uh, the issue with the uh, cholesterol or that was at least what the um, the study showed that as soon as they added um, copper uh, to the um, to the food that the rats were given then uh, the cholesterol level was uh, back to normal it just shows that uh, if you are taking something that is um, at a level that is above normal, that is more than what you can get from uh, your food, which is often what I'm talking about when I am taking amino acids, you need to look into could it have some sort of a negative uh, impact on your body and not just uh, being something that is good. So it has to be uh, said that you need to, to check how much are you actually taking and could it be uh, a problem. The interesting thing here is that actually when they were looking at uh, the mice in the uh, Taiwan uh, study, they actually saw that uh, what happened to the cholesterol level was actually that it was uh, reduced as well as a uh, triglyceride um, level uh, in the body uh, as well which is something that you would like to have low uh, level of so uh, in one sense if you are apparently not taking too much then it has a positive uh, impact on uh, cholesterol but if you're taking too much it has a negative impact uh, on uh, cholesterol and often it is so uh, with things in life that a little bit of something can be good but too much of it can be uh, Bad. So it has to be a balance and you have to know what you are actually uh, doing. So uh, what uh, histidine is actually doing is that it apparently is helping the body to produce more uh, catalase. So uh, in one study they saw that um, the messenger RNA for uh, catalase, so for the enzyme catalase, was upregulated and that means that uh, the body simply produced more uh, catalase when it was uh, given uh, more histidine or histidine at a level that you could not necessarily get from food alone or which would be problematic to get from food alone. So they looked at the uh, two studies where they or they did two studies uh, in Taiwan. Um, I think one of the, um, the people doing it, she was on both of the studies. So they looked at uh, one study where they were looking at uh, alcohol and how that um, affected the liver. So they made actually some alcohol related uh, damages uh, to the liver of these uh, mice. And then uh, they found out that if they gave them histidine, or carnosine and carnosine is uh, something that is being produced from a histidine in your body so you need histidine in your body in order to uh, produce a uh, carnosine so uh, what uh, they saw in the study was actually that uh, something else was being uh, produced more of in your body and that was the uh, glutathione peroxidase and glutathione peroxidase that is something that is uh, dismantling hydrogen peroxide and it does that by working on glutathione so basically glutathione is being oxidized when uh, hydrogen peroxide is being dismantled by glutathione peroxidase. So it is a little bit uh, complicated, but um, what you would like to have a lot of in your body is a uh, catalase and uh, uh, glutathione peroxidase. And apparently uh, it happens uh, to be so that uh, if you are supplementing with a uh, histidine or carnosine, primarily histidine, then uh, you will uh, get more of uh, those uh, two uh, enzymes. One of them is uh, the catalase and the other one is the um, glutathione peroxidase. But uh, what they uh, say in, in the, one of the studies is that actually if uh, you want to uh, boost the glutathione peroxidase enzyme, then uh, they only saw that if they were using one gram uh, per liter uh, in the uh, drinking water. So apparently you need a little bit more uh, uh, histidine if you would like to boost uh, the level of um, glutathione uh, peroxidase uh, in your uh, body. So uh, a little thing uh, to say is that um, the study uh, actually mentions that uh, histidine uh, is something that is good if you are diabetic. But uh, when I look at the study, then it might be very well that uh, it could be good for if you are diabetic. But uh, I think that you need to look into the medication that you get and uh, look at uh, how it um, might uh, change or alter something in your body if you start to take a histidine because it might be that if you are taking histidine then you might not need that much medication as if you are not taking histidine or something like that what i'm saying is that you need to be a little bit careful and uh, maybe talk to your doctor before you are taking histidine if you are diabetic even that uh, the study says that histidine is good if you are diabetic but uh, it could be a little bit uh, complicated uh, with how you are uh, using uh, the medication you, you might be on uh, at, at the moment. So have a little uh, look into that before you start to take it histidine. So uh, the bottom line here is that if you would like to um, boost the uh, catalase uh, for not 
having that much gray hair, then something like a histidine could be uh, something you could take. But you need to be a little bit careful with how much you are taking and if uh, your copper levels are going down. But again, don't take too much copper. It's not like more copper is better. You have to be a little bit careful with how much you take. And as I said, NHS here uh, in England, they are saying that uh, if you are taking below 10 milligrams a day, it should be fine. But uh, on a product uh, like this here, they say that this is a two milligram that it should only take one pill a day. So uh, just be sure that you are taking less than 10 milligrams a, a day. And if you are, for example, eating a lot of liver, then I would say maybe you should take a lot less than a 10 milligrams a, a day. And you might even get enough uh, copper because there's a lot of copper in the liver, but not that many people are eating liver. And I need to get started into eating liver again because I haven't eaten for a little while. So I need to start on that again. Not because I like it, but because I think it is really good for my body and my complexion and uh, so on and for a lot of stuff in the body actually. So yes, this was about uh, catalase and how you can boost that uh, in the body and uh, you can do that uh, by taking a little bit of histidine but take some copper at the same time. So yes, if you like to see more of this sort of videos, please subscribe, hit the bell and do all the things you're doing in order to be notified when I upload more of this sort of videos. Thank you for watching, see you, bye.